So the traditional method of coming up with a homebrewed D&D campaign is for you as a GM to create a map, points of geographical interest, you know, the settlements, uh, where the various humanoids lived and this sort of thing. Uh, then the players come up with their players. They either roll up their characteristics or they do a point by, they just decide on what classes and races they're going to be. And then you plop them down in the starting city uh, and you have a starting point, whether it's, you know, the cliché tavern or something more interesting, like they're in the middle of some battle or prison or whatnot. And the player characters are unified by their knowledge of the world. They either grew up in the starting city or somewhere on the continent. Uh, they have a sense of the various settlements, the relationships between the humanoids, you know, who lives where or whatnot. But you know, there is another way to start a campaign that I've used several times. And if it's executed carefully, it can create a very interesting gaming experience for you and your players. I call this the Strangers in a Strange Land premise for a campaign. And today, I'm going to show you how to do it. Hello again, folks. K.R. King here, helping one and all homebrew their own D&D campaign. So as I said, today I'm going to talk about my Strangers in a Strange Land premise for a D&D campaign. And most simply defined, this concept is that the player characters find themselves in a land that they do not recognize with a group of people, the other player characters, who they do not know. So one thing at the outset, in this video, I'm going to go over what you tell to the players when they find themselves in this Stranger in a Strange Land concept. I'm not going to go into what it is that brought them there, what force or forces, you know, what their aims are, if any. The reason is, this is the video where I just want to talk about what you're telling the players, how you're presenting it to the players. The next video is going to be about that. It's a little more complicated. It can range from something relatively simple to very complex. So I thought I'd break them into two pieces. You know, and this uh, starting scenario has some advantages over the traditional, you know, starting premises that I covered in my intro, but it does have some pitfalls that you got to watch out for if you want to execute this pitfalls that you can avoid by keeping things simple. All right, so first of all, let's dig a little deeper into the, you know, description that I gave of the basic premise of the strangers in a strange land. The players find themselves in a land that they do not recognize. So how did they get there and where are they when they make this realization? And in terms of that first point of how do they get there, do all the PCs in the group have the same experience in terms of getting from their familiar place to this strange land? You know, so do the players all just go to bed at home and then wake up and they're out in a field somewhere? And if that's the case, do they have all their equipment on? They, they wore it to bed? Or were they forcibly abducted as they walked down the street? And if so, did they have a chance to defend themselves and injure someone? Or were they just paralyzed by some kind of magic attack? Do they remember anything between the time that they were in their ordinary world and then suddenly in this strange land? You know, were they in some kind of stasis, you know, condition in which they could hear things or, you know, uh, think things or whatever. And the final question is, do all the members of the group, the PCs that are now here in this strange land, did they all share the same experience or do they have different ones? So in terms of all of these questions, I refer back to my very first video when I talked about how to homebrew a campaign when I said one of the crucial rules is to keep things simple. And as based on all the various questions that I started asking about, well, how did I get here? What was I doing? Whatever. Players start to ask questions that can complicate this scenario. And it really gets complicated if each individual player character has a different, you know, origin story as to where they were and how they got there and what the experience was like. So what I would recommend, and I'd say this especially the first time you try this concept, but really anytime, is that you keep the you know, origin story of where they were very simple and you make it the same for all the player characters and the period between when they were in their normal world and now in this strange world. And in fact, for the very first time you run this, what I would recommend is the players have no memory of what happened. They were walking down the street and they're in this field. Because the thing is, what's important in terms of game-wise is that you have you know, four, five, or six people, depending on the size of your party, who are suddenly in this strange world with people they don't know, and why, and where are they, and how can they get back? That's the pressing problem. Not elaborate explanations of, you know, I was doing this and that, well, wait a minute, did I hear this and that? Here they are, this is where we're starting the game. And the thing is, you know, the player characters, 
once they are aware, oh, we're all here together, we don't know each other, we're in this strange land, and they start to ask you questions and you just say, you have no memory, you have no ideas, just suddenly you're here, they're just gonna move on and realize, I've gotta get the information on the ground, I've gotta work to get this. Play the game, that is. Now, if you say, well, wait a minute, why, why can't I just have the players, you know, they got kidnapped, they got, you know, taken and put on some ship, or, you know, airship or something, and taken to this land, and then, you know, released in this field and abandoned. Well, okay, but why? why? Why would someone, especially if they're low level characters, if you're starting a campaign, why would someone do all this effort? And not to worry why, I'll explain it in the next video. Because the thing is, this concept is designed for gameplay, not for the logic of the way people really operate. And the best way to avoid seeing the man behind the curtain, as it were, is to keep it simple and make it mysterious. Here they are, what do you do? Now, there can also be a temptation during the period from which they are taken from their ordinary world and transported to this, let's say by some magical means, if you're going to just say, oh, you just woke up, here you are, is to give information or is to have something that happens to them in this kind of stasis period. And if you do that, I would make it very cryptic and very simple, maybe one or two lines, probably make it the same for all the players. If you're going to have each one have their own little cryptic phrase, again, you're starting to complicate things. But whatever you do, just keep that simple. Because what can happen when you start to give out little phrases, the players can start to fixate on that instead of the task at hand, which is just to explore and figure out where they are. All right, another important point, when they come to or you know, appear in this area, give the players all of the equipment they had You know, when they rolled up their characters or chose their class. Don't put them under any injuries or you know, any mental uh, duress from the experience, save you know, that they're anxious and freaked out that wait a minute, where am I? And I think it's important to make them all strangers because a group of people that know each other, if you're starting a campaign, you know, you gotta create a history for players that really ordinary in a campaign, maybe they know each other from some, you know, we were in the army together, but really they're gonna start running. They're kind of strangers. Even if you have two PCs, let's say, that are siblings, Yes, they have this history, but it's not really that impactful. So when you have the all strangers in this situation, it creates a bond of what is the situation? What's going on? And this is the hook of the campaign. So another trap to avoid is any kind of amnesia. The player should have a total memory of who they are, what their abilities are, the world they lived in. Don't fall into the, you know, Jason Bourne trap where he's totally familiar with the world. He knows how it operates and can speak and whatever, but he has no idea who he is because it starts to put a strain on the game mechanic. Well, do I remember my spells? Do I remember, you know, no. Because the players have rolled up these characters to run them, not to then have to refigure out what their abilities are. So here's another thing. Even though the player characters are all strangers to one another, make sure they have these same, you know, uh, spatial and temporal origins. That is, they're either from the same continent, you can have them from the same city, but they're all aware of the landmass, and they're from the same time period. Again, when you have interplanar travel, and sometimes people are tempted to say, you know, he's from 500 years in the future, and this, well, you know what, you're trying to keep things simple. And now you're having to juggle who knows what, you know, in terms of time period, it'd be 25 years or 100 years. Don't do that. Because the past world is not important. What's important is they're all in this situation together. How are we going to get out? So you just want to have them have the same basic framework of the world that they came from. All right, so the next question is where do the player characters? Uh, appear when they, you know, awaken or, you know, are teleported into this strange land. I would place them in an isolated and relatively safe location when they first appear. Because sometimes, you know, people when they're trying to think up cool ways to start a campaign, they say, you know, in the middle of a battle or in a prison cell or a catastrophe like a flood. The point is, right now, you are in an intense situation. What, what, how did I get here? Who are these people? Where am I? And that's enough. And you want to give the players time to take stock to say, well, what happened to you? Who are you? You know, what's going on here? And all figure out that they've all come through this kind of similar situation, even if it's mysterious. And once they realize we all share this same experience, which creates a bond, we all have the same task at hand to figure out, you know, where we are, how to get back. Again, this task is a bond. Now they can start to play. And there's an important thing for isolation to give them time to do that. If you place them into a, you know, a dungeon or, you know, a prison cell or something, unless it's abandoned, you know, if there's active, you know, people guarding them, right away they're in some situation and you've got to create these characters that are, you know, holding them or whatever, you know, let, let, let the situation breathe a little bit. Let the mystery build. And you do that by having them in an isolated location. 
Now, once they've all, you know, had this moment together, you can have a battle, you know, a group of gnolls comes by and they have to fight the gnolls and they see their various abilities and how they're going to operate together. They see that the world seems to be operating in a similar fashion to the world they've come from. All right, so where is this strange land? I would say if you're going to put it on the same plane, the material plane, put it far enough away that it's a daunting task to get back. Imagine if you were teleported from Europe to South America in 1250 ACE. That would be quite a distance to go, and it is a wholly unfamiliar land, both from the standpoint of the Europeans and any South Americans. You're on the same planet, but you might as well be on Mars. And if you do decide you, I'm going to put them on a different plane, you know, have it with these same basic physical characteristics uh, in terms of, you know, gravity, magical effects and whatnot, as uh, the material plane they came from. You're already putting them behind the eight ball with this concept, uh, as opposed to the usual kind of starting point for a campaign. So don't, you know, make magic effects halved or certain ones tripled. Or, don't do that. You also want to make sure that it's temporarily at the same time period as back home. Sometimes when you go to different planes or things, there, there's temptations to make it a different time. And this is not good. So I ran in an online campaign where we all got together and the opening of the campaign was there were these creatures that appeared from another plane and they were just attacking and looting and we were first level characters and all of us died in this battle. And then instead of you know, being dead, this god came to our souls and said, I have assigned you to go back to the material plane and solve this problem. Well, when we got back, everything was the same, the continents and everything, we, we were all familiar with it, except it was 500 years in the future. Well, here's the thing, unless you're a long lived creature, like an elf or something, all, everyone we knew, everyone we cared about was dead. And it became clear when we started asking questions, we could never go back that 500 years. So it was a little bit like a bummer. Aww. So what I'm saying is keep the same you know, time period, so, or at least if you are going to go in some time change, make it so the players can go back to their original time. It makes their objective you know, easier to deal with. I would also make this strange land far enough away, or if it's in another dimension, such that most of the humanoid sentient creatures that they run into have no idea about where they came from. Maybe some very powerful NPCs. But again, a point of order. Since you've already set up, you know, your scenario with the players, you know, in trouble, they're strangers in this strange land, don't make it such that their outfits, you know, everyone is like, a stranger, a stranger, or they're suspicious of them, or, you know, they're, they're witches. You know, have them wander in and be somewhat inconspicuous the other thing is, there should be no language barrier. If you watch the old episodes of Star Trek, you know, they're literally going to other planets and things, and they're all speaking English. Why? Because it's a TV show. Same thing here, it's a game, they should all speak common. Now there is another interesting aspect in terms of the Strangers in a Strange Land concept. It does lend itself in a weird way to an online campaign, since oftentimes, you know, you get on a Discord channel, you say, hey, I'm interested, and you start playing, and you are literally playing with perfect strangers. But again, it doesn't have to be that way. When I've done these with, you know, tabletop games where I had players I ran with for 10 years or whatever, and we're going to start a new campaign and I introduce this concept and they just go, oh, we're all strangers, we don't know each other, whatever. Because again, every time you roll up new characters, even though you all know each other as real people, your characters don't, you are introduced. And again, even like I said, if you're siblings or something, you've not run together in, in a game sense. All right, so here's another thing about the Strangers in a Strange Land. What, what starting level do you do? Now, if you start at first level and you want to do that, you can certainly do this with this concept. You just scale the encounters such that they don't get wiped out. Uh, and you can do that for higher levels. The one thing is you are making them friendless people in a completely unknown environment. So first level seems tough. I mean, again, maybe, maybe you always start at third level or fifth, maybe even seventh. You just scale things up, but maybe bump it up a little. And in fact, the interesting thing about this concept is it lends itself to much higher levels than maybe you would ordinarily do in a campaign. So that if your players are experienced enough to do it, and you are as a GM, you could start this at 10th or 13th level. You gotta be careful here. 15th to 20th level, in my opinion, D&D kind of falls apart, unless you have a TV game where everything is carefully staged managed. And again, you can go in, that's a whole nother topic for another day. The point is, I think you can go 10 to 13th. You can run pretty well if, if the players are ready for that. Because the thing is, this concept sort of lends itself to, you know, maybe a shorter campaign or a campaign where you don't need to invest all this time to get the players. I mean, how often do you get to run 10 or 13th level? Well, here's a scenario where you do. You put them in this world. Okay, how did we get here? 
and how are we going to get that? And you can give them some advanced monsters and all sorts of interesting things because the idea here is we just run along until we get back. Unless you want to start at your usual, let's say, third or fifth level, the players meet each other, and they, they work their way back, and then they get back to the real world. Well, now they've bonded as a party. Now they've gone through all those experiences, the battles, you know, being together, only being able to depend on each other. They really have formed a tight group. You can start running as a normal campaign. Because the thing about this is, it's an epic achievement. These strangers came together, no idea how they got there, no idea where they were. They figured it out, and they found their way back home. That's what we're looking for in D&D. And if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. I'm always looking for more. Leave me some comments. I love to read them, and I always answer them. But most importantly, keep playing D&D and tell somebody else about it.